Hi guys, we're just going to wrap up a bit of cricket from the weekend. Wadey, a really good uh, series whitewash of Australia. And, you know, we're always looking for positives when it comes to the Proteas and there's been few and far between, but they've had a really good series against Australia. Some new faces performing really well. And thankfully, after the horrors of last year and that World Cup and some, uh, you know, testing times, it does look like there's a bit of a silver lining to what was a dark cloud not that long ago. Yeah, it's, uh, it's great to, to sit here on the back of a, of a, clean, a clean sweep against Australia. Um, you know, we, we actually have had the, the stronghold over them in ODI cricket, so we just carried that on, which was important, especially after the, the manner of that T20 series uh, defeat. Um, and what we've done is we've unearthed uh, a bit of talent and, uh, and given guys that needed the chance to come back and, and fire. Uh, Heinrich Klaassen did really well. David Miller's seriously looking uh, composed and, and the leader of the middle order. And then we've added a few new faces and guys are scoring runs. And uh, importantly, the bowling unit has also continued to, to be steady in the face of, of you know, some strong batsmen in, uh, in Warner, Smith, uh, Finch, Manus Labuskafni, etc. Yeah. I think what impressed me most was that you, you saw them performing without a number of, of big names. You know, they've, Rabada's been out of the pi picture, Faf Duplessis, and Rassi van der Dissen, and yet they've, they've gone with a, a few youngsters and talented uh, guys that have come through, and they've really stepped up and performed. And then in addition to that, Quinton de Kock, who's the leading you know, batsman for sure in, in the Proteus setup, uh, you know, has failed throughout this ODI series against Australia, and, and yet they've managed to perform with the bat, even chasing targets, which has always been a bit problematic. Yeah. And uh, some guys have really stepped up. Heinrich Klaassen, for me, has been uh, incredible. You know, someone who, who faced real disappointment in not going to the World Cup, Ended as the leading run scorer, uh, he, you know, he, he, just his composure at the crease. Uh, he, he's kept things simple, but he looks in incredible form and uh, someone that I think you know suddenly blew the lights out in the series. And you know that's really uh, important both in T20 and ODI cricket. Yeah, I, I think what I'm looking for is that hopefully that the way we've conducted ourselves, particularly in our batting, where where guys have been coming in and steadying their ship and and batting through and laying the platform, which is what this simple guide to ODI cricket is all about, is that I hope that that is a strategic thing coming from, from the coaching staff. I know that uh, Mark Boucher is determined as ever to get this team back to the, where it should be. And so I hope that, you know, with, with uh, Yanaman Milan coming in in that second innings after the disappointment of, of a golden duck in his first outing and, and going through and batting alongside David Miller and then uh, Carson has done that as well. Uh, John John Smuts, you know, he was stuck around for quite some time on Saturday to, you know, we just took the game deep and then all of a sudden with wickets in hand and scoreboard pressure, Australia were the ones that folded where sometimes we've we tended to push the tempo a little bit too quickly, a little bit too early, get, getting a little bit flustered if we lose our, our main batsman and then uh, we just folded like a, like a house of cards. So maybe this time now the players have, have got a little bit more self-belief, a little bit uh, clearer guidance from from the coaching staff and they believe them in themselves. I think that that's something that Boucher will, will certainly do as a coach is he'll bring in players who he backs and he will tell them, look, I'm here for you, but you've got to go out there and, and deliver the goods. Yeah, I'm going to throw another curveball into the mix here. I mean, just looking at the way uh, Klaassen's performed, someone who can, can uh, keep and, and take the gloves, and Calvarena, another guy, very talented batsman, but he's also capable of keeping. Do we get to a point, um, maybe not now, but possibly a, certainly worth considerations, whether uh, Quinton relieves himself of the, of the keeping duties, allows him to focus on the captaincy uh, and, and just batting, or, or is he the sort of guy that is, is never going to be someone uh, standing at long on or fine leg and captaining from there? Because I, you know, I'm not sure if he, he's really ever played much cricket where, where he's not keeper, but yeah. it, sometimes it just looks like perhaps too much responsibility for him to consider captaincy and to keep where you have to concentrate every ball and then for him to perform as the opening batsman. Now, what about changing the picture completely, playing him as a batsman only, not captain and not keeping? I think with Klaassen and, and Verena, we've certainly got the gloves ticked. We do need to find ourselves a captain. Um, although the uh, uh, Boucher speaks very highly of, of Quinton and his tactics and, and thinking outside of the box, I just, I just feel, you know, for a guy that's so good at batting and is so key as our, our true world-class performer with the bat, why, why risk adding uh, any sort of extra uh, burden onto him, um, you know, extra things that he doesn't really need to worry about? I mean, his primary focus needs to be on, on making runs. Can't we find someone else that we, that we can entrust to, to take the captaincy role over? Um, that said, perfectly happy with him to, to be a, cap, a captain and batter. But sure, I, I think it's time to, to relieve him of the grabs.
Yeah, maybe one of those things where we're doing well and now we're looking to, to fix things that aren't yeah. broken. But, yeah. but uh, for me, uh, Van der Dissen could be a captaincy option. There aren't too many others, and perhaps that's why it's fallen to Dukaku, who doesn't, never really struck as a natural captain or leader. But he's, he's done a pretty decent job, and he, he maybe he thinks a little bit outside of the box. He's certainly a, a different sort of character. But um, just another one to, to consider, um, you know, before long, the, the attention is going to go to that T20 World Cup. Uh, the limited over signs, they do seem to be improving. Um, the death bowling is going to be something that we have to talk about because it's always been a question of, of whether during that vital two, three, four final overs, can South Africa bowl enough, um, you know, uh, deliveries, Yorkers, uh, you know, in that pop increase uh, to, to kind of really dry up the runs. What have you seen that gives you hope or, or do you feel like that's always going to be an Achilles heel? I feel like... What I'm liking is we've got enough depth at the moment. We just need guys to step up. We need guys to put up their hands and say, look, I'm the death bowler uh, like they've done in the past. Um, what, what I really like is our fielding seems to be on the up. David Miller is leading the charge. I mean, he was, he was phenomenal in the field against Australia in the, in the last game. And Kyle Verena, you know, is known to pouch a few good ones, even though he's, he's a wicket keeper playing in, in the outfield. So uh, at least with that, that, that saves you a few runs in, in building pressure. So Ngidi, for me, is, is, will be one, one of the death bowlers. Um, he seems to have enough variation and enough uh, ability to execute the, that. It's a fine skill. Um, uh, I know that Charles Langefeld sent the bowlers home after in a break to go and work on their death bowling, to go and work on their Yorkers. So I think that's going to be the homework from now until the rest of the series. We need to really just up that, um, up that uh, intensity and, and up the number of uh, Yorkers we attempt. Uh, I know that you know, in, the, in the T20 series, a lot of those were turned into sort of hip high full tosses and that were dispatched for six. So the, I, I believe that the bowl has got to be good enough. So we've got, we've got Ngidi, Rabada will be there. Um, whether he takes the responsibility of voting the death, um, we're not quite sure. But we've got enough. Andida Petakwaya is another one that can, that, that can do that job. So, yeah, this, the signs are certainly there. We'll need to find out our best 11 now with a guy like Klaas. And, uh, you know, he's batting so well that we need to see where, where he fits into the picture. Yeah, I think uh, Shamsi and, and Nokia were both really brilliant this series as well. And uh, you know, they've shown uh, that they, they're capable of stepping up. But uh, let's just wrap with talking about Yanaman Malan. Somebody who's come in and looks like he's born for that uh, international stage. You know, how impressed were you just with the, the composure he showed, especially, of course, that uh, uh, second ODI century where, you know, he really just led the charge, batted through the entire innings. Uh, I think he's someone who is going to be around for a long time, and it makes it very difficult for an Aidan Markram, I think, to get back into the squad. And uh, that's, you know, another thing of building competition that uh, really brings out the best. Yeah, I think, I think uh, this break would have done wonders for Aidan Markram. I know he came back in the momentum one day cup and scored a century himself. So he, he'll be back and, and getting into form. He's got so much quality and so much class that he has to be involved in the picture. But now he's got to, he's got to fight for his place whereby, you know, it looked like he was just going to come back and they were just going to throw him in there because he's, he's clearly the best. I mean, Milan uh, showed there what, he, what he's about. Um, it was some seriously intelligent batting. He really just took the game deep. So if he got a boundary with the first two balls, he rotated the strike. It was, it was a pleasure to see. Even, and, and we just kept the the scoreboard at, a, at that required rate. Australia never thought they were out of it, you know, one wicket, but he never, he never got out. And with David Miller, the two of them just batted so, so supremely well and just handled the situation, which the more these guys do that, the, the better we will be in the long-term uh, future. I know that the World Cup's a long way away, but the planning, like rugby, has always got to be uh, uh, in cycles. So hopefully we're looking at guys now who are going to build up all the way to, to the next World Cup. Cool. Thanks. Let's wrap it there.